Hello, this is Brian Hegney, instructor of game and interactive media design. In this video, I'm going to walk you through my modeling process for modeling this character here that you see on your screen, named Pueble. Uh, student um, model or designed this character last year in a character design class, and I thought it'd be fun to kind of walk through some character modeling techniques and have people in the class, if they'd like to, model this character. So with that, let's go ahead and what you're going to see coming up <clears throat> is a um, sped up modeling um, session I had, I did, that probably lasted about an hour and a half maybe, and I'm speeding it up to about 14 minutes or so. Um, Alright, so what we're going to see first is me making a plane that is one by one. And I'm going to kind of get, oh, I was looking at the correct size uh, that I should make this pot. <laughs> and so I'm going to make this plane and I'm going to duplicate it. It'll be a front and a side view, and I'm going to add a material, in e two materials. One of the materials is the front view, one of the materials is the side view. I'm using the same imagery for both of them. I'm going to realize I have to actually add a, a different image uh, component in the viewport for the second image. And I'm actually using cropping. I'm cropping the image from the front and cropping the image on the right. And I'm also taking a an alpha channel layer and adding that to transparency so that I can actually see through the images. Um, which you don't have to do. You can keep it white if you want to and not use the transparency, but that's what I'm doing. And now I'm ready to model. I'm probably going to freeze them the way that I've shown before. And I'm going to, so I'm going to put them on their own layer. I'm going to freeze them both, make sure it doesn't show frozen and gray. And now I'm not going to accidentally move them. So here we go. I'm going to start, um, I'm going to make a transparent material that is animated transparency as you drag the um, slider, the timeline slider. And I'm going to use auto key to do that. That should be in a video I have for you. Oops. From there, I'm starting with a cylinder, an eight-sided cylinder. Going back, I would have actually started with a higher poly cylinder. Um, so uh, I'm kind of annoyed that I did such a low poly job, but it, it is what it is um, for right now. And I'm just adding a, I'm adding a to that blue material a little bit of specular, high specular, so I can see some of the light bouncing off of it. And what I'm showing here is going back and forth in the front and side views and scaling. In the front view, when I started off, I scaled it used in all directions using the inside triangle of the scale gizmo. Um, and then in the front view, I did it just in one direction. And now you can see me rotating those edge loops to try to get a comfortable pose, right? No one's ever standing straight up and down. Our bodies are are in this weird um, angles. And here I'm actually extruding a portion of what's going to be a woody, like the woody driftwood. I'm not just moving verts, which a lot of students do. I'm actually extruding a portion that's going to, yeah, be like um, a broken piece of driftwood off of the leg. These are such tiny little legs to model. And just perfecting that. I'm playing around with Turbo Smooth, probably not going to use it. I just wanted to see what it would look like. Um, there I'm extruding the top edge and then I'm adding symmetry to it. And now I'm, what I'm going to do to make the groin area is select those inner, those two inner ones and extrude the, that particular, um, those edges outward, just the edges of the deleted planes. And I'm going to have to go back and then move those edges. Again, this is before the symmetry. This is underneath the symmetry I'm doing this. Um, but I'm showing what happens with symmetry on. 
I'm just going to check some character modeling like, oh, what do pe other people do? Um, so feel free to do that. You do not have to invent the wheel here. But we're dealing with a clay pot, I realized. And so I was like, oh, wait, this is going to be <laughs> rounded uh, like a round pot. And again, I'm extruding. Now I'm on the side. I'm like, oh my god, it's got to be much more roundy, much wider. Yeah. So, you know, he's two legs wide on the front view, but only one leg wide on the side view. So, of course, it's going to look a lot, you know, fatter. And again, I'm kind of moving verts, toggling on and off, moving verts. The cool thing is if you turn off or if you... You toggle um, show end or show final result, toggle that off. You can grab a vertex, toggle it back on, see what it's going to look like with the uh, symmetry on, and then move it. Okay, now I just extruded everything here. Great. That's actually really nice looking. Um, I, in the end, though, I'm going to want more, poly more polygons. I'm kind of annoyed with myself. Uh, there I'm going to extrude, go through a series of extruding by uh, holding down shift moving, scaling, shift moving and shift scaling. And that's how I'm going to extrude that. And look at, I'm in my front view so I can see it um, work out properly in wireframe. Again, I'm, I can't stress this enough. Switching back and forth between side view, front view, and perspective. Toggling on and off wireframe, show edged faces, and don't show edged faces. Um, and going between transparent, fully transparent, fully opaque, and like almost transparent. You're going to be doing all of those all the time. Like there's, you're, you should, if you're in one view for longer than a minute, you're doing it wrong. You, you have got to be moving around your scene, changing your view and, and specifically changing with intention in your front view, left view, side view etc. Top view, wireframe. Like there is a reason I'm in perspective right now. And that's really to see how is um how it, are my faces extruding? Are they extruding in the right direction? Or are, are all of the faces extruding that I think I'm trying to extrude? That's why I'm usually in perspective. And then what does it look like to a normal human? In front mode, uh, front view, and side view, as I'm making sure that I'm sticking to the original intention of the silhouette of the character. And I'm going to extrude these two. Again, this is a trick to... Um, I'm not just moving verts, I'm extruding verts. So when I wanted his head to kind of push forward to have that driftwood expansion and cracking, I'm extruding specific portions. I'm still experimenting. Like Again, I learned a lot doing this one time. Um, if I really wanted to do it again, I'd probably do some driftwood models uh, just to get the feeling for how to model driftwood, cracked, dry desert wood. Um, the artist here, this former student, you know, she did sketch drawings of driftwood before she sketched this guy. I should have done the same probably with actually doing modeling models of driftwood to get the best. All right, I saved it and now I'm yeah, orbiting around. What am I doing here? Yeah, I'm just realizing, you know, scaling that neck in. Sometimes, um, oh, I'm going to be making the shoulders coming out. I'm going to extrude those arms out. Yeah. And so what I was doing was shaping the four polygons into an eight-sided armhole and extruding it out. Extruding, scaling in specific directions, and moving verts in specific axes. One thing I didn't do here is normally when you want to model a character for animation, 
Um, oh, here's another example where I'm extruding to get that arm jaggedness out. I extruded it. I didn't move verts. I extruded outward. It's a totally different topology. Um, again, you can kind of do it on your own. If you choose to model this, go ahead and figure that out on your own. Don't, you don't feel like you have to do exactly what I do, because look at that. I made a mistake. I deleted it. did it wrong. I'm not sure what I'm going to do here. If I were to go back, oh yeah, I was going to say, if I were to go back, I'd only extrude the top. Oh, that's what I decided to do. <laughs> Good. This is me trying to shape that. I don't know. Did I do it well? Mm. Again, I should have probably modeled some driftwood if this were a real job. I, I would have done that. Um, I have never modeled a character like this before. So this was a learning experience. I've modeled... You know, I don't mind the way the the belly is, except it needs more polygons. Um, but yeah, those arms, I'm not in love with the arms, but they're, they're what they are. Definitely also um, using a specific type of selection. Oh, I selected the arm, and I'm actually, I duplicated it. I shift dragged all those verts and I duplicate it to its own element and I'm going to use a bridge tool. I'm going to set it up really close. I'm going to delete the polygons from the other side. You might say, Hagney, why don't you just symmetry? Well, guess what? I just have an, I have an asymmetrical head. I cannot do symmetry there. And so I figured, you know what? I'll just duplicate the arm. And... I'm going to, no, I'm not deleting those. I'm actually going to select those polygons. So bridge works by bridging selected polygons together, and that bridge tool will delete the selected polygons and join the two elements together. So again, this is their, their two separate elements in the same object, and I am setting this up so I'm gonna have to draw yeah this was really annoying um, I'm gonna have to draw those by creating those polygons on there and then I'm gonna select those once I get them this took longer than I wanted um, there was a little glitch in that so you'll realize what I did was I thought okay you know what fine I'm not gonna draw it this way then I am going to draw oh right I extruded outwards and then I extruded those edges out and then target welded that worked I don't know why the other way didn't work it was really annoying okay now that I did that you'll see that I'm gonna select from both ends Right, so I'm going to select the inside from both ends, the inside polygons from both ends, and then bridge it, and it just combines them. That was easy peasy. Yay. Probably could have done it in any number of ways. Um, I think here, I am I capping the holes? Yeah, and I'm doing it the same way I did it before. I extruded those edges by shift-dragging them, and then did that and then created polygons. Um, what is going to come up soon is I'm probably going to do some... probably going to do some... Hagney, Hagney! Smoothing groups. And I'm probably going to put the pot on one smoothing group, the rim of the pot on another smoothing group, the legs on a smoothing group, and the arms on a smoothing group, and the head on a smoothing group. But actually, I think it's actually the arms and legs are going to be on a smoothing group, but the tips of the arms and the legs are going to be on their own smoothing groups, and the head is going to have its own smoothing group. So that's what you see going on here. And again, those smoothing groups are what's really going to make it look smooth. Now, the silhouette is the problem, and that's what I hate. It's like when you see my when you see my character in um, 3D Studio Max or 
as a render <clears throat> in image, you can see that the facets. And I'm done for now.